Hello and welcome to my teaching and learning video. I'm Ollie Furnival. Today's video is my teaching activity number three, speed questioning. If you've got any questions about the activity I'm about to explain, then please um, get in touch with me via YouTube, Teaching and Learning is a channel, email me, oliverfurnival at gmail.com or Twitter at ibcoordinator underscore. And do please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Okay, so today's um, teaching activity is really, really interactive, okay? It's quite easy to set up, and what it does is it makes sure that all students in your class are getting involved in a speaking activity, and they're speaking to more than one person. In fact, the key to the speed questioning is the pace in the word um, speed. So, um, this activity can be set up as a recap to prior information taught in class, or it could be new information where you're starting to get the first responses from students that you will then take on into um, further work such as writing essays on it or presenting um, on it for example. Um, this activity I've done from year 7 through to years um, 13 in UK speaking and international baccalaureate. Uh, yeah, great, up to grade 12 when they're doing the um, diploma programme. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just give you a, a quick overview of the um, activity now. So if you can have a look at how I've set my classroom up. For the purpose of the video, um, I'm calling the students A through to J. Okay, so what I'm going to do is at the beginning of class, I'm going to introduce uh, maybe questions that I would like, or statements that I would like discussed in the lesson. They could be student-based or um, teacher-based. I teach a subject at the moment called Theory of Knowledge. So for this um, example of this activity, I'm going to use Theory of Knowledge questions. So, I set up the room, and I have a different um, range of questions, okay? What's the importance of proof in mathematics? Um, compare with human science, natural science, history, the arts or ethics, okay? Very open, um, open questions that I'm going to allow students to discuss and debate. Um, to what extent must we rely on emotions in the, of, in the pursuit of scientific knowledge? Can a machine know? So these um, are not closed questions, okay? They're designed, hopefully, to inspire students um, to debate them. So here's how you set up the activity. So I've got here student, real cool student A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, and J. So really, in real classroom situation, you've got people standing um, opposite to each other. And what I could do at the beginning of um, the activity, I could say, students on this side of the room, you're the ones who are going to ask the question, and you're going to hear a response from the person opposite you, um, and then hopefully that will lead to further discussion. When you say go and that starts, in this activity I've got five different discussions happening at the same time. A lot of noise, a vibrant atmosphere and people talking and there's no place for someone to hide. We're not just having student G and I with a hands up all class, these people are now talking to each other. So I let the debate go on, the discussion, um, it's up to you as a teacher what you want to do. They could uh, maybe have notes and they could be writing notes or typing notes as they go along, um, even scrolling their main ideas on the paper that you could come back to um, later on if you like. And then what I do is, after however many minutes you want to, three to five, depending on how it's going, even shorter, you shout change. And when you shout change, here's what's happened. So let's follow student A here. So student A has been discussing the question I showed earlier um, with student B. And when you say change, every student now moves one place clockwise. Okay, so here you see, our student I goes around here, we move everyone along one place. Okay, now a couple of things have happened, a few things have happened that make this a really, um, in, my, in my opinion, a really good um, activity. First of all, student A I just referred to now has a new question and a new person to talk to. Student B, you will remember, was here discussing with student A. Now what's happened, because everyone's gone one clockwise, student B, for this time only, student B is going to be discussing the same question. But the advantage here is that student B now has student D to talk to, as opposed to student A. And the whole point there is different ideas and different perspectives. So student B 
goes there. And then three minutes, you're now talking, unless you're at the end there, you're now talking with a new question to a new person. And then three minutes later, change. And what happens is we go off. We all go one clockwise. There we are, let's move them along. Okay, so let's look now. Student A, okay, is now talking to student J. So in a matter of only five, six minutes, student A has spoken to three different people um, in the class and is looking at three different um, questions. And of course, if you would like your class to note ideas from the first discussions, then what A and J can do is they can look at the ideas from other students, pick up and add to those, agree, back them up, um, disagree with them, or create completely new ideas. So, what happens is, uh, depending how much time you've got for this activity, um, you just keep saying change, change, change. And students are going round and round, and what's happening is they're speaking to a variety of people, and from speaking to a variety of people, they're picking up many new ideas. And they can use those however you want them to. As I said, this could lead to an essay on this for homework, um, a presentation. If you wanted to as a teacher, when you've gone around, you stop it, you can go um, type this up, you could scan it, print it for students. So what's happened is, as a class, they've gained ideas um, and different perspectives. I found with students that this helps their confidence. Uh, because I'm student C, I'm talking to I here, um, it's not just me and I with the whole class watching, the whole class are busy talking amongst themselves. So student C and I are talking to many people, building up their questions. Another thing that I like with this activity is that this can come from, from this debate, we can get supplementary questions. And it's something like theory of knowledge, that's, that's really vital. So I can, when I'm talking, to student I, we could actually raise our own questions, which I could write down there, and let A and G, who are going to come in the next change, discuss, discuss what I have done. Okay? So, um, I've used this, I use this regularly in my classes, however, I've also used this as a form tutor or homeroom um, teacher. And what it is, is good if you've got a vertical form, you can do it when the new year comes up, or even if you're starting as a form tutor in grade seven. It can be an icebreaker, and that would be less, you know, curriculum based questions, you know, things like, you know, what are your hobbies, etc. And it's really a good way for um, your form to get to know um, each other. Um, so the key to this activity, is the quick pace of it, okay? It's going to be change, 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 and therefore we're getting through as many as, as we can um, in the time given. Um, as a teacher, if you feel it's drying up, you've always got secondary questions, so you might feel actually this is it's not working, it's not producing much debate. I can swap that question halfway through, okay? And then I can add to all the ideas I get on it at the end of the class, okay? So, this is an activity called speed questioning and I hope you find it useful in your interactive teaching. Thank you very much.